In this video, we derive expressions for the Nusselt number for laminar film condensation. Before we go into the laminar film condensation, let us look at different types of condensation phenomena. There are two types of condensation. One is film condensation, other is a drop, dropwise con condensation. Condensation is the opposite of boiling, where you have a vapor phase condensing to a liquid phase on a cold surface. So let us look at visual examples of condensation. So what you see on the left is the film condensation and that on the right is droplet condensation. So as you see here, the initial droplets grow, they all merge together and form one single continuous film. Whereas in the case of droplets, the droplets grow and they remain fairly independent. And depending, okay, the, uh, sorry, the uh, cross section of this looks like this. So if this is subject to gravity, then any film that is formed here on the top will start rolling down and this film has a uh, velocity downwards. In the case of droplets, if there is gravity downward, then these droplets form here and then roll down, something like this. So droplets form, it rolls down, a cleaner surface is created, and then more droplets can condense there. So when do we have film condensation and when do we have droplet condensation? If the surface is very clean and hydrophilic, then the, you won't have a definite spherical droplet, but when, when the regions grow, they coalesce and form a single large film. However, if you have a hydrophobic surface where there is a definite contact angle, then you find independent drops. Or when you, if you have microscopically uneven surface, each surface can nucleate a drop and then uh, that will grow. So microscopically uneven surface is also equivalently a hydrophobic surface, just as it is in a lotus leaf. In this case, again, uh, they grow and then uh, if there is gravity, they roll down. For heat transfer, in this case, the uh, vapor condenses, giving out heat to the solid surface. Now, if it, in this case, when vapor condenses, because there is a film and the film is having a very low thermal conductivity, and because this is a film is of finite thickness, the heat effective heat transfer in this case is lower compared to this case, because in this case, as the drops form and grow, they cannot form a continuous film. Instead, they simply roll down, creating a fresh surface. So the total heat transfer is more efficient in a dropwise condensation, roughly about 10 times more than the film condensation. Now let us look at a model for uh, heat transfer in film condensation. So following on the important approximations that are made, firstly, the vapor phase is at a uniform temperature. That is everywhere it is at the saturation temperature Tsat and the surface is at Ts. And because of this, there is no, uh, we assume that there is no boundary layer here. So the temperature simply goes from Ts to Tsat over a distance delta. Note that delta is the film thickness and not the boundary layer. Similarly, for the velocity, it is assumed that the shear stress of the liquid and the solid here is very small or practically zero. Had it been a solid here, the velocity would have gone to zero here. But because this is a uh, liquid gas interface, 
the shear stress goes to zero, not the velocity that goes to zero. And therefore, there is no velocity boundary layer as well. So the delta that denotes here is simply the thickness of the uh, film. And the thickness grows because you have more condensation that is happening. So as it condenses more, uh, more of this vapor condenses, the thickness of this film grows. We'll see how this happens in the next slide. But firstly, the, uh, we look at the expressions for the velocity profile. Now to do that, the other assumption that is done is that the inertial terms is taken to be negligible or the advection terms is taken to be negligible. This happens when Reynolds number is approaching zero or it's a uh, low Reynolds number flow where all the terms on the left hand side go away and we only have the viscous term and the gravity or the pressure term. So balancing the viscous term and the gravity term, we can integrate velocity and uh, we can integrate velocity along the y direction, that is along the perpendicular direction to the surface twice. And the velocity profile turns out to be a quadratic velocity profile, where delta is this film thickness, which is unknown for the moment. So we are integrating from zero to delta. At delta, this boundary condition is applied. And in terms of the unknown delta, the velocity is a quadratic function. Now, once we obtain the velocity, we can also obtain the mass flux. Mass flux is simply uh, mass flux per unit width. So there is a width of this uh, plate which goes through the screen. And per unit width of that uh, plate, the mass flux is simply rho u times a. Area is a times dy. And since we are considering per unit width, that uh, width comes here. So it's simply rho u times dy. And substituting the expression for u here, we get this uh, delta square now becomes delta q. So the mass flux depends on delta as delta q. We'll use this expression in the next slide. Now let us look at the heat transfer process. To consider the heat transfer, we consider a small control volume, elemental control volume, of height dx and width is this b. This is the unit width that goes through the screen. Now, in this elemental control volume, the mass flux at any point of time is m dot x. And at x plus dx is m dot plus dm. Why is it more? Because in this surface that is here, more vapor has condensed. So as more vapor condenses here, you, you're adding mass from here to here. You're not only adding mass, but in the process of adding mass, the latent heat is also added to this control volume. So through this surface, you have both mass flux as well as latent heat flux that goes as dq. That is on this side. On this side is the surface. The surface, again, the heat flux is Q double prime times B times dx. This is B and this is dx. So let us see the process. So because of this incremental mass addition, dq prime, which is nothing but dq divided by unit length, that is B, that is heat flux, um, heat rate per unit length, is simply amount of heat that is coming by this amount of mass that was added here. Because this heat rate, this is mass rate that was added. So dm dot times hfg, which is the latent heat divided by b. Or this dm dot by b, which we saw in the previous uh, expression, is simply d gamma, where gamma is the 
mass flow rate per unit width. Now this heat flux that comes here is the same heat flux that goes here. So we have neglected any heat flux that is coming from here and going out here. Why? Because we have neglected the uh, advective terms in the equation. Therefore, this uh, dq prime can also be written as q double prime s, which is this flux times dx. This is per unit width. And since this is the this is purely by conduction, so we have assumed that here it is Ts and here it is T sat. So by conduction, so if this is Kl is the thermal conductivity of the liquid at that temperature, and so delta T by this length, delta T is T sat minus Ts divided by this length, which is delta. So K delta T by delta is your heat flux times dx. From the previous expression, we had derived an expression for previous slide, we had derived an expression for gamma in terms of delta, which causes gamma as delta cube. Now we can differentiate that expression along the x direction. So d gamma by dx goes as delta square times d delta by dx. Now, by equating these two expressions, also we can get an expression for d gamma by dx, which is again T sat minus Ts by delta times Ks by Kl divided by Hfg. So we have one expression for delta x coming from here, where is d gamma by dx, and other expression for d gamma by dx coming from here. And therefore, we have an expression for delta square d delta by dx goes as 1 by delta or delta cube times d delta goes as something times dx. So this expression simply is delta power 4 or this entire thing x delta goes as some constant times x power minus 1 by 4. So this is an important expression. What this says is that the amount of mass that is added by uh, condensation, which is purely coming because of uh, latent heat, is grows along this length. If, if you assume that there is no uh, dropwise condensation, it's film-wise, then this thickness of this film goes as x bar 1 by 4. Note that this is not the boundary layer, but the thickness of the condensed film that is moving downwards. Now we can also get an expression for the Nusselt number or the average Nusselt number. For that, we write the expression for the surface heat flux. Now in terms of heat transfer coefficient, we had exactly evaluated Q double prime S in the previous expression, but to estimate the Nusselt number, we write it in terms of H of X times T sat minus T s. H of X in this case is nothing but K L by delta. So K L is this thermal conductivity divided by this delta. We've already obtained expression for delta in the previous slide. And then if we define an average heat transfer coefficient, H of X, which is one by L zero to L of H of X, then the Nusselt, average Nusselt number in terms of average heat transfer coefficient is this. And this integral can be simply, is simply an integral of delta. And that can be evaluated exactly. And you get an expression for Nusselt number. To summarize, for laminar film condensation, we can derive exact expression for the Nusselt number. Here, we had assumed that there are no boundary layers because the saturation outside temperature is constant and the velocity uh, shear stress of the liquid on the liquid uh, vapor boundary is zero. And then the rate of condensation leads to the heat transfer, which gets transmitted through the surface. Thank you.